U.S. politics are the whole world's business, responding to questions and comments from readers. I thought I'd go through the questions and comments on my various platforms today and tap out some answers to the ones that jump out at me. Chang writes on Substack, Caitlin, I have a question for you. How do you deal with the outrage building up inside against this otherworldly behavior that has no words to describe it? I'm struggling in my efforts at keeping my constant anger at Western authorities, politicians, oligarchs, administrators, PR scumbags, etc., in check. Answer. Inner work. You can't engage with this shit without copious amounts of inner resources, which for most people can't come about without extensive inner work. What that looks like will vary from person to person, but some popular expressions of inner work are meditation, mindfulness, energy work, healing practices, therapy, mantra recitation, self-inquiry, etc. Anything that expands your own consciousness of what makes you tick inside, so you're not just flying on autopilot getting whipped about by the unconscious forces within you, and enables you to find a foundation of inner peace. There are vast oceans of deep peace within you. Actually, deep peace is what you're made of. But this doesn't do you any good if you're unaware of it. It takes some work. Really deeply question your most fundamental assumptions about who you are and what you are, and what the world is, and what thought is, and how perception is ultimately occurring. Practices like mindfulness have been getting a bad rap in revolutionary circles because they have been harnessed by the machine to train workers to remain functional in this stressful and abusive status quo. But they do that because these methods actually work. If their power can be harnessed to keep you from having a mental breakdown while working a horrible job for shit pay, it can also be harnessed to keep you sane and stable while fighting the machine and even to open up a lasting shift in perception which gives rise to a better quality of life than you had ever dreamed possible. Too Much Work writes on Substack, Caitlin, if you could, a few words about the U.S. stealing an airplane from Venezuela the next you write. Too Much Work is referring to the news of the U.S. government's seizure of the official airplane of Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro, under claims that it was purchased in violation of U.S. sanctions. The thing that really struck me about this was a quote from an anonymous U.S. official to CNN who broke the story. Quote, This sends a message all the way to the top, one of the U.S. officials told CNN. Seizing the foreign head of state's plane is unheard of for criminal matters. We're sending a clear message here that no one is above the law. No one is above the reach of U.S. sanctions, end quote. The fact that the unnamed official sees U.S. economic sanctions as the law for other countries shows that these freaks really do believe they own the entire planet. They see other countries as their property and believe they are therefore entitled to seize any property of those countries if they are not sufficiently obedient to the dictates of Washington. When U.S. officials talk about the rules-based international order, what they mean is the U.S. making the rules and giving the orders and everyone else obeying, or else. Mike writes on Twitter regarding my commentary on U.S. politics. Aren't you Australian living in Australia? Talking about the worst impulses of the world's most powerful and destructive government requires no justification. It's not strange and suspicious that I do it. It's strange and suspicious that everyone else in the world does not. Before, when I'd get hit with these You're Australian retorts, I used to respond by pointing out that all of these works are co-authored by my American husband, who should get to have a voice on the things his country does. But after a while, I realized that this overly defensive response was missing the point because U.S. politics are the business of everyone on this planet. I get to talk about the things the globe-spanning U.S. empire does in this world, regardless of who I happen to be married to. A lot of Americans seem to suffer from the delusion that they live in a normal country with a normal government, so they should be allowed to go about their business in private without unwelcome scrutiny from foreigners. But the U.S. is not a normal country with a normal government. 
It's the hub of the most powerful empire that has ever existed, which uses its military and economic power to bully and dominate the rest of the world. You don't get to tell anyone who lives on this planet that U.S. politics are none of their business. Dulce writes on Twitter regarding the way Republicans have been accusing Kamala Harris of being a communist. Harris being called a communist has to do with her pushing communist ideology. Duh. I've said it before and I will say it again. Trump supporters are the most gullible people on earth. They'll believe anything, literally anything, no matter how self-evidently idiotic, if it comes out of Trump's face hole. Noah writes on Substack, What would you do to solve it? How would you get the Antichrist BB out of there or amenable to a peace deal that would end his grotesque political career? How would you remove the equally cynical Hamas, PA, and Hezbollah? Do you disagree that this must happen? Uh, I absolutely disagree, yes. The solution to this crisis has nothing to do with removing Hamas or Hezbollah. It's not even ultimately about removing Netanyahu if we're talking about solutions. Get rid of Netanyahu and the Israeli state will still be intrinsically abusive, and its abusiveness will naturally give rise to resistance groups. The obvious solution is for Israel to stop killing people in Gaza and the West Bank, right the wrongs of the past, and end the injustices of the present. This would likely include ceding large amounts of land, the payment of very extensive reparations from Israel and ideally its wealthy allies, eliminating all unjust laws and apartheid systems, a comprehensive push to purge society of the toxins of anti-Palestinian racism and Islamophobia, the right of Palestinians in exile to return to their homeland, and the negotiation of a peace agreement which yields so much that even the most hardline factions of Palestinian society would be compelled to agree with it. Something along those lines would be very effective at bringing peace to the region. Israel won't agree to it, but that's because Israel is the problem. It's an extension of the bloodthirsty madness of the U.S. empire, essentially an endless proxy war with a lot of electronic dance music. That proxy war will likely continue to be waged upon innocents in the Middle East, in one form or another, until the empire itself is brought down. If you have any questions or comments you'd like me to address, leave them in the replies below, and I'll try to get to them in a later article like this one.